or we are currently planning a build here for September about 30 which is like the very end of September and then of course we're planning on the December build in Saudi Arabia or it might be Sudan or wherever you guys end up doing that because uh, I know Ahab right now is is in investigating what would be the most strategic place to hold the the Middle East North Africa event but as far as the technology itself goes I mean the you know the short of it is we've done done a lot of work on the tractor about eight or so prototypes and in general it works but it's about refining it to now where I think we're ready to a final state where we just make everything work properly and, and work out the little details we've proven just about I mean you know a lot of the different subsystems up to the tracked version I mean that's all working the modularity is working really well and um, we're ready kind of like for the next next big step so let's um, with that said let's just start reviewing what's happened to date and what we want to borrow from the past and w where we're going into the future so uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll actually just use this uh, dev team August 2 meaning I'm gonna just, just start one slide here on um, tractor time so if you look at this document so that's the working document page you can edit it there summary of that is Ahmed from team InnoBay has joined the development team and we're waiting for a few more people from your side to to do the test I mean I think it's taken people some time but we're definitely yeah. looking forward to more people Tractor September 30, 30, 31st, OSE USA. Middle East North Africa build December. This is for some very tangible real events. The one September 30 to 31st is definitely happening. And uh, let's let's look at that. Now the things on a, on a plate are, we've worked typically with normal power cubes and the minimum, like let's talk about let's start by saying what's the minimum viable product okay MVP okay. versus the other options that we have that we want to do but it depends on more people joining the team because we just don't have the energy so so other features uh, solar so other features solar powered for slow operation the minimum viable product is a very simple uh, gasoline powered power cube which we have met much experience with we've probably built so far maybe i don't know maybe like 30 of them solar powered so but the other feature is the, because the the power cube is a universal hydraulic power source it can be fed by whatever power it could be based on an electric motor it could be based on solar power driving an electric motors but basically the two two possibilities you have is either fossil fuels or renewable fuels or solar or electric but in any case it works so that you have some kind of a motor driving a hydraulic pump so the question for what drives the hydraulic pump is the question so uh, and just for reference the kind of typical work on a power cube there's the, the power cube page on the wiki is pretty representative of the existing work if you see the the video on the the power cube page that's like the general way we build it so I'm just gonna put a link to that in a document that's the the main power cube page you can see how the thing works and how it's put together and um, now what we want to do is a CNC cut frame I would say that's like a minimum product because um, why because it's just so much more efficient to do it especially after we've built the the 3d printers and seeing how fast it is to build with CNC cut frames because all the alignment is already taken care of by the CNC cutting you don't have to worry about it uh, the the cube when CNC cut is self jigging you don't need any jigs or alignment procedures because the parts are already accurate so we want to do that and with that said we can integrate so I want to do as a minimum viable product integrate the fuel tank into the frame um, because when we can because already the fuel tank could be consisting of three if you've got four of the frames frame sides like one two three four either three or four of the frame sides that are CNC cut can already be used in that fuel tank and from there just a little bit more work gets you a frame integrated 
tank, which means that you can CNC cut it and possibly notch it and bend it so that the build of the, the hydraulic tank is super simple. I can tell you that from experience, the, the hydraulic and fuel tanks were is uh, counts on the more difficult of all the work that's done. Everything else is, you know, the, the fuel tank and, and hydraulic tank, that actually takes the most time because of all the welding in there and so forth. So we're going to simplify that. So the big word is there, simplify. And in fact, um, the way we're doing uh, just a detail on that is use some kind of a tank sealer instead of relying on welding for the final seal. Use a tank sealer instead of uh, a finished weld for seal. This is actually not accurate with the diesel. We tried before with the diesel. Okay, it's somehow working, but after a while we have to change it later on. For the basket, after a while. Uh, for the seal? Uh, for the, yeah, for the seal itself. Okay, well, you know more about it than I do, it appears, so we can talk about that. But uh, it's, it's an option. I know they make, uh, I don't know what kind of uh, sealers they make, but, but I thought they, there's ones that wouldn't have issues. Okay. So, um, so, uh, but machine, uh, yeah, uh, one question here regarding the hydraulic pump. Yeah. Uh, what you see in the design that the engine while it's working, the hydraulic pump is still working. Yeah. Uh, my point here, uh, I'm trying, uh, I'm searching already for a design which is cheap and reliable to, yeah. to make it somehow, uh, like you can say, uh, disconnected. Uh, from the engine while we don't use it. You know what I mean? Okay. Oh, you mean uh, make it so modular that you can actually use it in other purposes? Yeah. Oh, that's a... That's I don't have to, but uh, I, I'm trying to search about that. Okay. Maybe I feel find it, I don't know. I like it. That's, that's actually exactly what I'm thinking, because that if we take the modularity to that level, that would be even better. So I would say that... We really work hard, like probably make it in a minimum viable product, make the modular, like really modular. That means you can use it in other places. You can dismount and reuse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. The, um, the hydraulic pump. Yes. 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 If we can make a module that basically just clamps onto the engine like that, that would be awesome because I can also tell you that making the mount, um, perhaps if you look at the overall difficulty of the power cube, the number one thing is perhaps the pump mounting to the engine and the second one is the tanks. So if we can nail this, I like it that you're thinking about it already. So let's let's put that on um, just, just de defining the minimum viable product here. So... Um, and let me also link to life. The other part that people need to know is the life track gene genealogy page. So we have a genealogy page for all of our machines, but you can click through all that we've done. Um, so track, I'm just going to put that link there, tractor genealogy for anyone looking at this document, because we've built a bunch of stuff already that we're basically putting all our, all our learnings together on. So, okay, so on other features, I have charcoal powered as the option. Once again, that is, we don't have the manpower right now to work that out, but if we get more people on a team, that's a call out for a biofuel tractor. We've already built a prototype uh, in 2015. So um, I think there's a, let me, it's Gasifier 3D CAD page on the wiki. So let me just paste that link. So you know what the prior art is on the... So in a working document, I'm putting a link to... Let's see, what's this? Yeah, Gasifier 3D CAD right there. It's already linked there. Um, yeah, and I, what I would like to do this time around, I think that, that we want to make as a core feature. Um, if we want to do... A total modular system then we would want to and this is this is for you know we can discuss this more but it is a decent idea to actually separate the main part which is the engine hydraulic pump 
have that separate from the cooler and um, right now I mean I would go for the multiples of 16 horsepower as the base engine unit since those engines are extremely cheap um, and you can start with as far as power so you can do like 16 horsepower you can do 32 horsepower you can do 48 uh, yeah as basic power level yeah uh, but that means like if we really want to make it modular then you want to make the engine module with the pump super easy just like you said with um, and then if you want to have very simple modular hydraulic power units then you can have a separate module that's the hydraulic tank and all the different uh, multiple power cubes are drawing off the same hydraulic tank because one of the serious issues uh, as far as hydraulic circuit design is if you have a system that's running on multiple power cubes with individual hydraulic reservoirs then it's pretty much impossible to not spill like overfill one tank versus another because the return is likely to be different for the different tanks depending on how you wire it up so there's tricks there but one easy way to address that issue is to have a common hydraulic tank for all the power all the power cubes and that way you don't have to worry about the more complex plumbing that's required for uh, feeding back to separate reservoirs that's that's a detail um, yeah yeah, I mean, there, this gets into the actual detail of, okay, what is our hydraulic diagram? Because you can, you can wire this up, plumb it up in various configurations. I mean, the hydraulics, uh, the hydraulic circuit design is, is a complete part of the, you know, complete story in itself as far as the design goes. And you want to make, for modularity, you want to make it such that it's as flexible as possible. So we can look at those details later. But let's, let's keep going through the main features. Um, definitely the robotic version, uh, meaning like guidance with like computer vision. I mean vision, like uh, robot vision, right? Uh, that's definitely a, a thing that's a definitely addable module. I mean, everyone does this. It's like first robotics or whatever, the toy robots. That's common knowledge in the open source. So we can add that. And the relevance for that is... If we get that done, and I know one of the Saudi guys has is, is, got that skill set, uh, so hopefully he can join us. Uh, so this is a video for for the InnoBay team to to join the team. But the practical application for us is we can do, if you mount a, a solar panel with a very small power cube, a little solar power cube, you can have a tractor that moves very, very slowly, but it, it can still move right yeah exactly because hydraulics are flexible like that the power uh, not not the power but the torque will be there uh, even if you have a very tiny power cube because of the way hydraulics work so you can have a, even a single solar panel run uh, you know say our micro track which we did you know 2,000 pounds a single uh, 200 watt solar panel can run that it would mean that it goes very, very slowly across the field, but it could be used for things like weeding. Like if you got a garden and it, this thing just automatically goes in your garden and does your garden as part of a, a home scale food system, that is extremely practical and, and doable with existing open source technology. I mean, this can revolutionize how people make food, but I, I think most people think that that's like a big deal and it's impossible, but it's not. It's really... A lot of the enabling open source technology is out there for that to be possible so that you can run your engine if you want to just use your tractor in regular operation, but you can also do it autonomous operation where you just have very slow motion, but still with a very large torque that you can pull whatever a yeah. weeder, you can do a weeder, whatever, some kind of a till, like mowing or tilling operation or whatever that's that does that 24, you know, not 24, 7, 12 12 out of 24 hours or 6 out of 24 hours as long as the sun is shining that thing is working for you without you having to worry about it so that is very attractive and i think of you know from, just from the marketing perspective that's a huge selling point and why i think we really want to get that going because that would really 
turn around a lot of people's perspectives of what open source can do. That that could be very, you know, that's that's wired material. That's going to be on the front page of Wired once we do it. Not front page, but a, a good article in Wired, right? So, um, so okay, so I'm also going to put as a minimum viable product the fact that we can use either tracks or wheels. So the critical part to that is the universal rotor. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we want to go to the probably the best place. It's called the modular wheel unit. So if you go to the OSC part library here, uh, a lot of the parts relevant to the tractor are here. So let me go to, let me just paste that link. Um, go to OSC part library. Let me maybe share my screen if the bandwidth is there. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to share my screen. The bandwidth might be a little limited here. So, so I'm pasting the OSC part library in a working document. Slide 10. So in the OSC part library, if you click on that, the part of interest is the modular wheel unit. So, so let me put a link to that. So universal rotor or let's call it the modular wheel unit because that's more descriptive for the tractor. The modular wheel unit, click on that. So once again, for anyone who who's looking at, if you look at the chat box, that's the working document. Page 10, we've got the modular wheel unit. So if you look at modular wheel unit, it also goes by quick connect wheels, but this is the core of it. Basically that uh, if you look at, for example, update of July 14, 2015, you see that universal rotor, which is basically a frame with a hydro very heavy duty hydraulic motor with two bearings and a shaft. And the shaft that we use could either be two inch or three inch. If it's a three inch shaft, then this universal wheel unit, you can attach wheels directly to it. In another application, you can put the drive sprocket on this, like you see within the, the live track, the micro track here, and you're driving a track. So that is when you use the entire universe, universal rotor, this universal wheel unit, with its own structural frame it's a ready quick disconnect module that you can use on any machine so we've used it for the the trencher we've used it for wheel drive for track drive very universal universal thing it can be a, a post hole digger it can be whatever you like and it's and that's a very powerful concept so one of the first things in the project here will be to reverse engineer this basically to draw this out within FreeCAD. Now this is a file that this is from another guy who did this in like AutoCAD but he actually lost the file so so we don't have this even to get a step export but we do have um, at least the full SketchUp if people want to work off SketchUp but the dimensions the actual real dimensions are there in this if you go to the universal motor page the actual explicit dimensions are here so we can reverse engineer this this entire structure uh, basically draw this up in FreeCAD so that's one of the first things we want to do and then add the the bearings the hydraulic motor and everything else so we have a real less realistic rendering and we should do two files one is a very simple just general um, simplified file and another one it's the full detail which has all the bolts and everything and all the minor details but that's going to be heavy so we won't use that in our general design we'll use that as in other purposes but for for the conceptual design we want to use a simplified file so the FreeCAD file remains very small now let's talk about this universal rotor here what you see is a version that has a structural frame built in it you can also go so, and why and so if you have the the frame built into it what you see is for a micro track application that thing is so wide and I'm looking at the quick connect wheels page on the wiki that shape is 
the the universal rotor is so long that at minimum you have to have about 40 inches or so uh, to drive a track like that that's why one of the tracks there it's driving one track but it's above the other track on the other side so if you want to make a small machine you're actually very limited so this universal rotor is very good for larger machines and you can even do the micro track like we did but it's kind of awkward so another way to go for the track drive is that you actually eliminate the entire frame the structural frame and instead just use a plate because the shaft of the of the motor itself can support a sprocket as long as the sprocket is not feeling all the weight of the tractor that universal motor can drive the sprocket directly without the whole structural pieces in between and that's going to be useful for applications where we want to make a very small tractor like a say a walk behind or even just like a toro dingo size if you know what a toro dingo is that's a small scale walk behind tractor with loader but for very small machines we can get rid of the the whole frame and just use the motor directly so those are the two variations now for the general process of what we're going to design I mean if we, if we build around so we've got the structural tubing that we still want to use for all the frames and everything else like the cab we want to do custom arms because arms have complex geometry it's not that easy to make it with a box beam tubing you can but you're kind of limited um, so let's actually move on to the well let's let's finish the um, the design here so we're gonna use the definitely a design where using the modular wheel unit we can use either wheels or tracks or Uh, I'm going to put a separate note there or use the the hydraulic wheel motor without the frame so you can make a much more compact machine because as you see that frame to hold those two bearings and to hold that shaft requires a lot of space so we don't have to do that we can drive things directly off the hydraulic motor shaft but we have to be careful how we do that okay um, so that's that um, the other features are nice to have is remote control naturally um, core feature of the current design is you can do any power cubes so one to three power cubes um, I'm gonna put that as the core features in other words we're designing more for the flexible system where we can modify this where with minor modifications we can use one two or three power cubes so that's uh that's required in the mvp um continuing with the other features 3d printed track pads that would be nice um but at that point we probably want to do we'd have to have our filament maker to extrude extrude our own rubber filament because we can't afford like you know 15 bucks a kilogram that's that gets pretty expensive I mean per weight I mean metal is a dollar per kilogram plastic is fifteen dollars a kilogram um, which is off-the-shelf prices unless we start making our own our own filament we can't afford to 3d print too much rubber or plastic I mean because the the track pads or tracks even 3d printed tracks that would be that that would be a lot of weight but that's like nice to have uh, possible but you know not worry about it right now um, modularity 2.0 over the 2015 version tracks easier to build power cube is light more modular power cube more modular track yeah I mean we're really gonna maximize the modularity like better than last time so that's like the in the MVP so yeah like 2.0 modularity because we've already shown this amazing modularity with interchangeable power cubes interchangeable wheel drive and so forth but we're going to take it to the next level so that's that's basically it so so let's do uh let's do an add the next slide to actually talk about start talking about the the design itself so i'm going to do general general design concept is that i mean 
let's just start sketching out so you can understand how easy it is. I mean, for me, when I first built the first tractor, I was like, wow, it's not that complicated. You need a frame. <laughs> you got a frame. Uh, you got a power unit, which we have. So we have the ability to do frames and to do power unit. I'm sitting on top of the frame or wherever. Or the power unit itself can be structural and that be the frame. That's another way to go. But not the way we're doing it right now. We're doing a non-structural power unit. Because it's for our application right now, it's actually easier. Because the frame, what we found out is that the frame is just, a simple frame is just too easy to build. You don't need to hang everything on a power unit. Because once you start hanging everything on a power unit, it's actually very there's not enough bolt holes there it gets gets really too complicated and then it's very hard to remove the power unit itself so there's reasons why we don't want to uh, do the module like the it's modular but it's not structural so it's non-structural but modular power unit okay and there's there's a, a whole discussion as why that is desirable from our learnings okay frame so that you got the frame and you've got the wheel drive and then typically for for uh, a usable tractor, you want to have some kind of implement. So so then like a loader is a universal implement for a, a lot of things because the loader also allows you to mount the other implements. Now you can have a loader on the front, on the back, but let's just do this as the most basic uh, tractor design. You got a power unit, you got a frame, you got a wheel drive, you got a loader, and you also have the hydraulics. I mean the hydraulic circuit. Um, But literally, the point of this is, think when you think modular, what you have to think is that each one of these can be built independently of one another. And uh, that's why hydraulics, I mean, they can literally built, be built independently and then put, put into place. Everything here can be built independently and put into place. And that's how we achieve the, the one-day builds. That's required if you're going to, the modularity is required for the one-day build. Um, just pushing the limits of what's possible there. So, so that's that. This is essentially what a tractor is. And when you understand it, you can okay. Uh, the frame we can probably understand. You guys all did the power, the making the power cube, the cube test in FreeCAD. That's all a frame is. The best design of a frame is typically space frame construction, which is uh, which is space frame. It's called. But we can also do flat frames, like a flat platform, too. That works, too. Um, power unit. The, the other thing, if you talk about a tractor that's for human consumption, that you actually sit in it, you need to have a cab. Safety, I mean, safety first here. Tractor is heavy. If it rolls on you, you can die, or if you fall off it. So you typically have a cab, and that's a, an important safety feature. Uh, unless you have a walk-behind tractor, where you're just walking behind it. So... The cab is a square structure that cubic that protects you. It's got a seat. It's got the hydraulic controls. So the, actually, the, most of the hydraulic controls you can really we should probably represent it like if the cab is here, most of the hydraulic controls are actually going to be in the cab because. Uh, no, no, actually, not recommended. <laughs> so there's, there's something or a leak. Uh, well, something would uh, would pull down and. Uh, Okay. Well, well, then call it hydraulic controls. The the you have oh, to have the okay, levers. Hydro. Yeah, I mean the hydraulic controls are in the cab, so let's clarify that. Uh, I mean, of course, the other hydraulics are on each component. Like the wheel drive has its has its hydraulics. The loader would have hydraulics typically, and so forth. But you have to have the control system in there. So cab with hydraulic controls. Um, which is levers, or you can, if it's more automated, then you have actually buttons and things. So whatever, whatever that is. Okay. There we go. Okay. So let's talk about frame. Um, like the basic thing, like when you build it. Okay. So that's, that's the super basic, uh, design diagram, right? And then you go a little more complex and then you can start saying, um so let's let's talk about this so frame holds all components together i mean everything pretty much attaches to the frame 
So let's say, I mean, just about everything attaches to the frame in general, unless you, you have the cab, atta cab attachments to the frame in general, right? Um, hydraulic controls go in the cab if there's a cab. Uh, sometimes, sometimes no cab because if you do walk behind, do a walk behind or stand on tractor, that's for smaller ones, that's for smaller. Uh, but the best design principle would be if you can do this and you can actually replicate modules of this. So say this is our, um, well, let's talk about the basic, the base tractor unit. Uh, like for it to be tracting traction, it's it's got like it's got to have some kind of a frame, wheel drive. Would be like like a basic unit. Cause, okay, so if we take take a look at frame and wheel drive by itself, just the way we design. So I'm kind of going through the a lot of the design principles of how what we do works here. You can have a frame with wheel drive, and you can have that replicated multiple times. Um, so one one configuration possible is you've got what you have here one you know this kind of assembly here or you can have let's take this now now talking about scalability f f you can have frame and wheel drive but you can have multiple units of that too so the way we built um, I mean you can have multiple frame units with wheel drive like for example you can have an articulated version you can have a connection you can have a connection there that's articulating. That's one example you can do. And then the power units and everything else would have to sit somewhere, but that would be just like the frame and wheel drive units. Um, so, so that's the that's the curious thing we can do because of the way we're we're designing the wheel drive. Like, say you do the track, the track. Let's call the track or a wheel our basic basic drive module. Uh, you can make configurations where you have all kinds of variations on that so let's go let's maybe go to the i'm gonna duplicate uh, slide duplicate slide um so tractor three let's talk about the basic implementation that we'd want to do now um allow for both track and wheel and that would be like our first problem problem statement so and the way you can do that so let's let's start looking at the details of that so so say you got a frame you've got the universal rotor on it and if we want to get more detailed here then you can have a track unit on this universal rotor And this is what we've done with, for example, let me paste, um, I'm going to actually paste this thing in here um, so I can refer you to this. So that's what happened here. You got, a, you got a frame, you got a wheel drive, and you got a track unit. And we did that, ended up being about 40 inches across. So if you want to have a... Yeah, uh, I'm just going to talk conceptually right now for what's what's possible here. But as you see here, this is I mean, this is this is all it is. It's it's just a frame and there's a power cube on top of this. But there's a frame here. The wheel drive unit is attached to the frame. So that that's the attachment. If you see at the bottom al along the tubular members. And it's a bolt-on attachment. The, the wheel unit is a bolt-on attachment, the way it is currently. And then there's the track unit. Now the track unit is, is uh, if you can consider the way that this can be varied, already a very simple frame of this, so this kind of design. You can have a frame, and then you can have, say, two track units. So it's more like, uh, you know, a bigger, you know, bigger frame, more track units. You can do like a 
pretty large tractor using just this basic basic philosophy here you can have four track units one on each side and do like that and a, and a big frame and that would be some heavy duty tractor and that this is one thing that i think we should probably focus on doing this like as one implementation we can do this very readily using the current design that we have here this is completely doable now this micro track here um it is somewhat awkward and too tall like the way the power cube sits on this because it sits above the track it's actually too tall and a little bit dangerous so if we do something like this we need to take the power cube much lower so this so we can't use the elongated rotor with the frame itself so here what we'd want to use uh, so so let me point to this slide this this design here and that's this is something we can literally start designing this this thing here and then think about how we put the power cubes and loaders on it but so this is a large tractor a large tractor example and on it you can put like on this frame right here you can put a bunch of power cubes you know you can just stack it full of power cubes so you can put you know one two I mean I would actually shoot for we can prototype it with as little as one power cube one power cube is sufficient to run this and we can we can do this very basic thing but what would look very impressive actually is if we do this and uh, put on like four power cubes because at that point well four power cubes is only the with the existing ones 16 times 4 is only 64 horsepower so that's you know that's a nice serious working tractor and um, tractors of this size now like track tractors like this they they are very expensive so already at this kind of implementation we'd be saving a lot of money over an existing tractor but think about it if you actually added like four more power cubes that makes a 128 horsepower tractor now that is some serious work um, and at that level we probably would be very competitive with anything that's out in the market because the facts are the larger you get the n more non-linearly expensive a machine becomes and that's where the advantage of modularity comes in because our price remains linear linearly increasing for the size whereas standard industry it's pretty much non-linearly increasing once you get to a certain size so for example your 500 horsepower or 250 horsepower tractor somewhere around there 250 horsepower or so maybe 500 i mean you're talking about 250,000 to 500,000 dollars like half a million ridiculous for us we could do that at w way less than 10 times way, way less than 10 times less or probably about 10 times less if it costs a, a quarter million we probably could do it for like 25,000 in material costs and you can go through the numbers each power cube is 200 bucks for the engine so with everything else you can be talking about 500 bucks for the power cube let's say you know so say you put it's only you know say you want a 160 horsepower tractor you got 10 power cubes five thousand dollars um 480 horsepower fifteen thousand dollars so you can see how we're not adding too too much to the overall cost anyway the, the prices get very attractive uh once you go to larger machines but okay so that could be a big one but let's you know let's not go so crazy right now i think very practical right now would be four power cubes and a nice tractor like this would be a serious earth moving tractor like it would probably have uh, depending on how we do the track units easily like twenty thousand pounds of pu pushing torque pushing force and s stuff like that okay but let's talk about a small version and how would we do that with a similar track unit so um so this one is essentially like this it's a track unit track unit um yeah i mean the, the conceptual design here is i mean is essentially like this here so for this 
so let's talk about how we can do the same design pattern so like basically with the same or very similar parts and some that are identical we do a small tractor so let's talk about a walk behind compact walk behind comp because we actually need that we want to build that for here like for example for Katarina for myself um, walk behind equivalent say of Toro Dingo Google Toro Dingo and paste that link in for me please um, look up what that is and paste the link if you if you can please um, so there you have a frame you know just a little frame whatever we do and now do the we can do tracks but but a, so you do like you can do one track on one side and one track on the other side and then you got a loader so let's borrow a loader because that Toro Dingo has a loader for example and a loader is very useful for all kinds of purposes as I as I mentioned so this is Tractor Design 101. Uh, so here's a loader. Now, how do you do the details so that we can do a very tiny machine that's only like, um, you know, 36, 3 feet, 4 feet wide for a person? Well, you can't use the standard wheel drive unit. We just would have to take the regular hydraulic motor and put the, the sprocket directly on it. So there we go. Um, the wheel drive is simply a small, very the very small iteration without the structural frame. So a tiny wheel drive. So you have the on a on the hydraulic motor you have the the sprocket on it directly. So we would have to design it. So wheel drive. You need one on each side, and that way you can have steering, which is track steering. So this steers as track steering. This big one. Okay, so let's let's let me tell you one detail about this. If it's like this, track steering here is difficult because if it's long like that, you're gonna put a lot of torque on uh, track units. It would probably work, but if you're gonna do this configuration here, you you would have to do either articulating steering. So you basically, I mean, in this this implementation, you would want to go like this. You want to have two frame units and our articulation in the middle. Does that make sense? Because of the way it it it, uh, it would really rip your wheels off, you have to have very strong. You have to really highly engineer the wheel units. If you do if you do the connection, an articulated steering connection between the two, this is readily doable with much lower technology level. You don't have to worry so much about. So like that, articulated steering is one implementation. Um, and let me go to the next page for the, the the configuration like of the large tractor with track steering. Um, so slide, duplicate, slide. I'm going to mute somebody here. I'm going to... Can I mute this guy? Yeah, mute this guy. Um, okay, so tractor, if you go to the next page then, uh, tractor slide four. So getting rid of this. So large tractor with track steering not articulated steering I mean you can have the tracks turn but that's a whole complex mechanism so we're talking about you know like the lowest technology level that you can accomplish for a large machine the way you can do it for a large tractor to make it very easy to steer is if you widen the wheelbase so say you got two tracks right next behind to each other and a very wide wide wheelbase that way when you uh, when you steer 
the forces on the tracks themselves are minimized. So in, in this configuration, we can get rid of the articulation two frame, two piece frame. You can do a long frame that's long this way. So that um, the tracks, basically so that the, and you can put as many power cubes as you want on this, but this way, basically the width of the tractor has to be greater than the length of the tractor. So to represent that, so that's the, call that the length, the length has to be smaller than the width. That's the general, general condition for this large tractor to work just by track steering without having engineered wheel mounting. So that's the width there. The condition is, and that's the length. Condition of satisfaction has to be, if that's the length and the length and the width, you really want length lower than width to make for very, very simple tr mounting. Like here, you can literally connect them in a very simple way. It's, that's just, just how it's gonna work. Um, because you can think about it, if you're turning, then say you, this, this track is stationary and these are to turn to the, you know, to this side, well, turn one way, one track is going to be in place and the other one is going to be rotating, right? Or you can go where the one track is rolling forward and the other track is track side is going backwards. That way you can literally spin in place. And if you think about it, it'll be much harder if the length is too long. It'll be very hard to do that. But you can think about it, the, the, the wider it is, the easier it's going to be for you to spin in place, which is a very useful thing. Uh, for motion, like you want to do tight, tight radius turns, you have you want to be very manu maneuverable in uh, on a tractor. So that's a general theory. Okay, so we'll quit the theory for now here, as far as where we are with the design. But but the next step, as far as the practice goes, um, we can start generating the actual parts and forget. So we already have the tubing, so we can make simple frames, we can make cabs and things like that, and we can bolt things together. Uh, but the next steps here would be to draw up the universal rotor, meaning the, yeah, so let's, um, oh, where'd that go? So for the universal rotor, if we click on, so back in slide, slide 10, the goal for, you know, the immediate design would be to, to draw up the quick connect wheels in FreeCAD. So basically we got a reverse engineering do reverse engineering on this. Just basically put this into FreeCAD. The uh, the design that's already shown in detail. There's a there's a like a technical drawing of the wheel units on a Quick Connect wheels page that needs to be drawn up in FreeCAD. And then w what we also want to do is drop so drop a version of this with the drive sprocket. You know here it doesn't have the drive sprocket. We want to add the drive sprocket and so forth. Um, to this, but once we generate this, then the detail. Let's let's save that for next time. But for for this week, let's generate this, and we can uh, start adding. If you want to add wheels to this, well, let me just tell you about the tractor here. The considerations on page thirteen of our working document, or um, if we have a tractor, uh, the tractors for page thirteen here. If you have. Uh, the universal rotor, which is the structural unit, you can mount either wheels or tracks to that same machine. So that's the beauty of it. And we can now begin designing machines that are either tracked or wheeled. And you might have to perhaps mount the universal rotor in a different way on the frame, like maybe like facing down, like down as opposed to on top of the frame, so that the wheels have more space, you know, more clearance above the ground. But the concept is, if you use the structural universal rotor, you can attach either wheels or tracks to it. And that's the beauty of it. So now we can basically start playing the same machine, literally. If we build our wheel units then and track units, those are modules that we can literally use either. And I can tell you that for, for muddy territory, I mean, you definitely want tracks a lot of times. Uh, but you want wheels when you're going on traveling more distance. I mean tracks are pretty hard on the road They bump a lot. So so you want to be flexible and do all kinds of configurations So I would say Ahmed the first assignment would be to drop the the wheel unit. That'll be number one um, okay. Is that something you can do you think? 
I think it. Yeah. And then we can start adding the frames, and then I'll, I'll add some more notes to um, to the to this design document to start detailing how we actually do the tracks, uh, improving on the tracks. You can also start thinking about it and, and all that. But and I think you did well. Like you, you proposed that other power cube that was good for various reasons. So I think you definitely have a, a design mind. So that's good. Uh, we can start going and and design the basic frame with wheel units. Once we get the fr the power cube done, then we just simply attach a few power cubes to this, and we're good to go. But it's it's simple as that. The the detailed so-called engineering work of actually how things fit are going to come when we get to the loader, which has to have very specific geometry and has to have specific reach, and we probably want to do a yeah that we'll we'll get to that later. But but that's how it works for now. We do the hydraulic motor. That kind of motor that you see in there, that's that's what we have, and that's what we've been using. Now, we we might also want to look at other sources, like, for example, for you guys in Saudi Arabia, can you get a motor like that? I don't know. Um, or, or what's the closest to it, you know? Yeah, I'm sure you can. The question is... Yeah, I mean, the question is how, how, how much it's going to be in the price. Because here we got one of these from Surplus Center. They were like... Um, like three hundred seventy nine dollars for one of these motors that are fifteen thousand inch pounds, which are very strong hydraulic motors. So uh, we'll see what we can do there. Okay. So, so I think we should wrap up for this meeting. Let's let's get um, let's get this design for the wheel units, and then we can start playing with frames and and adding different wheels to it. Mm -hmm. Now, what I would suggest is for the track team. Would it be convenient for you to uh, have a weekly meeting? Can we can we do that? Do like check in for an hour, get get going on the design, and then we can continue going like that. So so in the current implementation, we can do like once you have the wheel units drawn up, we can literally start attaching them to small and large frames to build like either a tiny tractor or a huge one, and then we can modify like okay, how big are the actual tracks that we're making? Uh, what tracks are we going to make for the very tiny? tiny tractor versus the huge tractor and so forth but uh, we want to make things as flexible as possible but the work that's to be done at this point is uh, I mean if we get going on the on the universal rotor the second variation with the drive drive the detailed attachment to the frame we have that pretty much worked out for the the large one the framed one it's just bolts that make it happen for the one that's that's directly attached to a sprocket that geometry has to be worked out completely so that's a whole design task right there how exactly do you mount it will be a simple mounting plate as simple as a mounting plate and then you you have to we have to work out the coupler how you couple that drive sprocket you know um, using a simple way simple as possible um, details there and otherwise for anyone else who would want to contribute to this what's the most useful thing to do well I think the power cube work like we started in our meeting is probably the best place to start but we'll do that meeting on Saturday during the Saturday design sprint um, so Ahmed let me ask you is um, would Tuesdays be convenient for you, and what's a what's a time that works for you? Because we're we know we have a t significant time difference. Uh, Tuesday, it's okay for me from in your time at uh, from city CST. CST I think. It's okay for me. Noon time CST. Uh, one one eleven o'clock or twelve o'clock, or even one o'clock. Okay. Or even one o'clock. Okay. Um, okay, so we have the re we typically have the regular meetings at 1 p.m. So maybe we can make this at noontime. Okay, good. Okay, so let's plan on the next meeting of this tractor team at noontime. So basically, right before the the main meeting, um, we'll have the dedicated tractor team meeting right before on Tuesdays, every Tuesday noontime, Central Standard Time USA. Yeah. And okay, but let's let's just get good clarity on documentation. So as soon as you have everything, anything, uh, you should be pasting that where? 
I don't know what you said there, but the answer is on your log. So because everybody's got, we've got links to everybody's yeah. log on a development page. So so I'm looking at Ahmed log on the wiki right now. So and do the earliest entry on top. So as soon as you have that design, just post your uh, free CAD up there. And OK, yeah, that's that's the main thing to know. And that's it. All right. So that'll be it. So start working on, on the universal rotor, get all that in as much detail. So one file should be a very general file, like a very tiny, small file. And another file should be a full detailed file. And we can upload that over the same file on the wiki because we have version history. So we can download, upload over the same file. So we're not keeping track of multiple file names. We can do that. Okay.